Hey, this is Kurt Roscoe with Stone Glacier. I'm going to take you through the different setup options for the Sky Solus one person tent. All right, when you first get your Solus one person tent, you're going to get the fly body, the web truss, and the fly sheet are all going to be rolled up as one, ready to be set up. You're going to get two DAC tent poles. You're going to get one repair sleeve for the poles. You're going to get 14 stakes. 14 guy lines. These are 94 inches long. We can trim them to length. We'll show you how to set those up. And then you also get the DAC quick twist clips. These can be used in place of the web truss uh, if you're using it in summer, very mellow, light conditions, no wind, if you want to save a few ounces in weight. Now we'll take you through how to set up the tent. The first step is going to be to stake out the tent body. So when I unrolled the tent, there's the fly right there. We'll attach that in just a second as it comes out the first time. Stake out the four corners. The web truss, is. this is the piece that all the tent poles will slide through. When it first arrives, the web truss is not clipped into the, to the tent body. So that'll be the first thing you do. Start at the top where you see the cross. Clip in the, the small side lock buckle and then just work your way out from the X. I've already done the rest of them, but you can see the attachment points. And once again, once you do this once, it's attached and you're set to go every other time that you set it up. Next step is going to be to insert the poles. Once again, you're gonna have two poles. They are the same length, so it doesn't matter which one goes where. I'm gonna start at the head of the tent The web truss has an opening and the tent pole will slide up in there. And one of the keys when you do insert the poles in here is to pull on the web truss opposed to pushing on the tent pole. And that will keep it from getting caught, bound up or causing any damage. And then what I prefer to do is to push the pole all the way through and nest the pole in the grommet on this end. That'll save you one trip back and forth on the tent. Now we'll do the other side. Insert it into the sleeve of the web truss. And then I'm pulling on the web truss. And you can guide that fabric right through. Pops out the other side. Push it down in. And then nest it in that grommet. All right, now that I have the tent poles in, one of the things that makes it a little bit easier to stand is if you just pop your corner off of your stakes that are pulled out in the corners. You can put it up with the, with the corners staked out, but it gives you a little bit more flexibility. So I'm gonna grab hold of the web truss. I'm gonna let the web truss pull tight in my hand. Then I'm gonna nest the pole, that pole, in the grommet. Then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pull on the web truss. Pull it down and nest that one in the grommet. And now at this point, it's easy to just go get your corner stakes again. Now, once we have the poles in there, you'll see that there are tension lock buckles at the end of the web truss. We'll tension those down. That creates tension on the entire web truss, pulls everything together tight, and gives added strength to the pole structure. So added strength in the wind, added strength with snow load. Now we have that completely tensioned. The next step is going to be the fly. The zipper is at the front of the door. On the back, there's a round circle for your vent so you can see where everything matches up. Now, your guy line points are these tabs. So the first thing that we want to do is underneath, on the web truss, you have these rings. And you take this toggle buckle through that ring and through the same toggle buckle. 
Now, what this allows is this ties this point directly to your web truss, directly to your pole, directly to your tent body. So it connects all three different layers. And we'll do that on the way going down. Same thing on the back side. Toggle through the ring and back through the ring that's on the tent fly. Tensions it in. Now, once I have those completed, I have this clip that is now going to go to the round black ring on the bottom. And we'll do that at all four corners. Once we have those on, now just like the web truss, you have a buckle tension where you can tighten your fly and get that tight as well on all four corners. All right, so you have 14 guy lines. They're all 94 inches in length. Preferred method to attach them is going to be to pull the tail out of the clam cleat, then run the tail through the webbing loop, and then back through the clam cleat. So you have your adjustment, then on the very end, just simply take a loop, tie a simple overhand knot in it, now you have a loop that will go around a stake, or if you want to go, if you need to go around a large rock, you can loop and you have that adjustment so you can tighten up around a rock and use that as, as your stake point. So now I have my guy lines installed, and once again, just have to do that once and then you're set for the life of the tent. You can see I used the two bottom ones on the corners. These tops can be used, but it's primarily in a situation where you have a really high approach. Say we had this backed up to a very steep bank or something that we wanted to be able to tie off to that we couldn't get straight down, then you can swap one of your lower ones to the upper ones. But for most uses, these ones on the corners are going to be good. I also installed one in the front. Doesn't need to be nearly as long. It's only about 18 inches long, so you can cut the excess off. Same thing in the back. And then we have the one that's on the side as well. One of the key features of the Solus One Person Tent is its narrow footprint and its ability to be set up in areas where you don't have much volume on the back side or you want to tuck it into trees or cliffs, whatever that might be. It has an adjustable vestibule on both sides. There's a toggle underneath. This toggle, if you rotate the vestibule back up, can be attached to the ring on the inside and then you can guide the tent out to keep your footprint at only 44 inches wide here at this center point. Or if you had that extra room, which we do right here, I simply pull the vestibule out, have a tent stake through the loop, set it up right there. I haven't attached my guy line, I'll also attach my side guy line. Tension the guy line, you can just put your fingers in between there to split it, come out to tension it. And now you have vestibule space so it will fit a backpack. It's easiest to just slide the backpack in from underneath or you can access it from the inside through two drawstring holes which I'll show you right now. All right, so once inside the tent, you have a drawstring hole that's on either side. There's a toggle on the back side to keep the string tight. Simply open that up. And now you have access to the vestibule space, which is really handy for when you get back to camp, take your boots off, your gaiters off, those types of things can come directly, go into dry storage. And then once you tighten it up, 
you can tighten this toggle switch back. Now the other thing that this offers is uh, in warmer condition, it's also a great vent when used in coordination with the vent back here in the corner and the vent sewn into the door. So in storing the tent, there are two different options. First, if it's been a really wet morning, weather that night or heavy dew and the rain fly still has quite a bit of moisture in it, it's best to take the rain fly off separate, shake the rain fly out, get as much moisture as you can, but pack it separate away from the tent body. Otherwise, if both of them get packed into the same uh, tight compression bag or storage sack, the moisture can impregnate the tent body and it'll be wet when you set it up that night. However, if you're not dealing with a very wet uh, tent fly, then you just want to work in reverse. And so the first thing that we'll do is we'll go around to the four corners and we'll loosen the tent fly. And also from the inside, you can reach under there and you can loosen the tension lock for the web truss as well. And once we have all four of those, In this case, I've already loosened the back ones, so I don't have to go around to there. Now I can simply pop that off of the corner right here, pop my corner stake in the back so it won't catch. Take the tent pole out of the grommet on both sides, allow it to come down, and then of course, if you open up that bottom, the air will flow out of it a little bit easier. Now, when I go to get the tent poles out of there, we don't want to pull on the tent poles because it's elastic cord that holds them together. So if you get that friction, too much friction on there, you'll extend the tent pole. You want to push the tent pole through. So I start on this end, take that off the tent stake, and I can feel it down through there, and I can simply push it back through the web truss. And once you get it a little bit over halfway, when I go down to the other end, I'm going to be able to pull that tent pole out. Same thing on this side. And now I'll be able to store the entire tent all together. It comes right out. And this one comes right out. Now I'll be able to fold the tent together, roll it up, or put it in a stuff sack, whichever you prefer.